Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Donnelly with Barrier Free Contractors. This is the Accessible Barrier Free Homes channel, and I combine it with the Accessing My Home podcast. A lot of information, two in ones. All right, we're speaking and collaborating with some of the best experts in the mobility world, advocates and promotions, fantastic accessibility solutions from some of the best in the business. Today, we're speaking with Kevin Berry, ADA expert and owner of ADA Consulting of Southwest Florida. Get a hold of Kevin. Uh, for whatever you need in this world, he'll, he'll provide you with the best of advice. Uh, Kevin, thanks for doing this with us today. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. All right. So if, we, if you could, let's talk a little bit about barrier-free kitchens and how you would address those. Okay. So the main thing is, and, and accessibility to a home is getting into the home. Once you get into the home, there's two main areas that you have to use. You have to use a bathroom and you have to use a kitchen. So the kitchen becomes important in the fact that if you're in a wheelchair or you have mobility issues, what do you need in the kitchen to go for? Well, if you're building a house or even remodeling, uh, ovens that open straight forward, they're very difficult, even if you're not in a wheelchair because it opens up to you, then you've got to try to maneuver yourself around it. So they do make ovens with doors that open like a cabinet to the side. So if you can afford it, put in that kind of oven door, it makes it a lot easier. Microwave ovens, they usually mount them above the stove. Aging in place, yeah, that's good when maybe when you're young, but after you get older, it's harder to reach things that are up top there and into the uh, microwave. So uh, think about not putting a microwave up there, put a fan up there and put your microwave on the counter. Uh, same thing with a dishwasher, dishwashers that open with, a, with the, uh, the front door, instead of dropping down and pulling the racks out, they're very difficult for people uh, with mobility issues or in wheelchairs to get things in and out of the dishwasher. So do that. Uh, sinks, sinks that have the under counter open. Uh, I know people like to put everything they can underneath their sink, all the things that they use for washing and all their chemicals and things like that. But if you're in a wheelchair, you may need that that open area under the sink. So think about that. That can be easily done by changing the counter. The other thing is the faucet that's up there. It should be a single lever faucet so it can be used with a hand that's not functioning by just pushing it on or off with the back of your hand or some portion thereof uh, so that you can get the water into the sink, uh, sink bowl. Speaking of that specifically, uh, what do you feel about the touchless faucet? Touchless faucets are good too, uh, where you just wave your hand in front of them. Those are all nice features. And one of the other features I was going to bring in, as you've mentioned before, I'm older, so I come from the time when contractors would used to put in a light switch and they'd put it inside the kitchen. Well, that's really good, except when you leave the kitchen, how do you shut it off? Because now the room is dark and you can't see. So it used to be, well, put in two light switches. Doesn't cost a lot more when you're building a house, but a little bit more difficult if you've got an existing home. Good thing to do is to, we got technology now. We have talking light switches. We have talking everything. You can turn your light switch on by just telling it to do that. And so my suggestion to that, it's a little bit more money, put in talking light switches. So when you leave a room, come into a room, you can just tell the light to turn on or off. You can actually tell your microwave to turn on and off. You can tell your toaster to turn on and off. You know, so update your uh, technology in your bed, in your kitchen. That's probably one of the most needed rooms to have that in. I was just going to say that. I mean, to be able to do what you just got done saying, come on, it makes a ton of sense. And, uh, you know, it really is not all that much more expensive, but well, well worth it. Over time, the return on investment is exceptional. Well, and that's the other thing too, you know, if you're an existing home and your light switch is at 54 inches, which used to be the electrical standard, and you need to get down to 48 inches and, and the contractor says, yeah, well, they didn't leave me enough elect electric wire up in the attic to drop it down in a, we, uh, another uh, five or six or eight, eight inches or whatever you have to, you don't have to drop it down. Put in a, a voice activated light right. switch and right. that takes care of it or put in, you know, it's something like that and, and that takes care of your problem. We do that in uh, in businesses and things because I, the worst thing I get is from saying, well, you know, it costs us a fortune to lower that light switch and more wiring the electrician. And I said, well, just put in a voice activated. And, and that works out like in a restaurant. When you walk into a restaurant, how much does it cost to leave your lights on in the restroom and nobody's in there? 
So now they put in, they put in uh, activated light switches. So you walk in and the light comes on and it stays on for like five minutes or whatever. And, the, or, and then when you walk out, the light goes out automatically. And so technology has made it a lot easier. I agree completely. One, one other aspect, a couple other aspects I want to touch on quick. Uh, pull down cabinets. How familiar are, are how, how much do you like those uh, uh, both electronically and manually? Well, the electronic cabinets are great for people with disabilities. So you need to mount your counters at 34 inches, uh, maximum height, 34 to 36 inches uh, to the finish. And uh, so that gives you your counter height, but then you got the cabinets where all your dishes are. How do you get them out of there? Well, so they have, they have voice actuated, actuated or uh, switch actuated where the cabinet, upper cabinet comes down to the height of the counter to allow you to get your, your dishes and everything out of it. So if you're in a wheelchair, yeah, that's, that's uh, a great idea to put it in. Building a new house or even changing your kitchen over, yeah, it's a little bit more money, but let me tell you, if you can't get your dishes out of the cabinet, what good is it? So this way here, your cabinet kneels down to your counter height and you get things in and out of it. And uh, yeah, that works out real good. One other thing too is accessible handles on your on your cabinets, like down below, you can get into your cabinets because you're in a wheelchair. Yeah, but how do you get into your cabinet if it's, if it's a handle that's not uh, conducive to like a closed fist operation? So talk about that with your contractor and look at the different handles that would be convenient for you. Yeah, so, so Kev, I guess the, the, the main thing that I'm hearing from all this is the independence that this provides, all of these various aspects. You know, to have to ask somebody to pull the dishes out of, out of a cabinet that's, that's too high, you know, you're constantly asking, asking, asking. And in this case, you know, it's never going to be perfect, but it, but the whole everything you've talked about does create independence. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're trying to design the house so that people with a disability or aging in place or as you get older can function normally without having to have somebody come in and do the standard day to day functions that you would normally do. Technology now has made it easier for us to do that kind of stuff. Wonderful. Well, anything else you got to interject for me? Well, the other thing is the floor space in the kitchen. My wife is constantly yeah. complaining about uh, galley style kitchens. Galley style kitchens are functional for people that are upright and, and able to handle different things. But if you're in a wheelchair or you, things like that, you need to have at least 32 inches clear floor space between your cabinets to get in there with a wheelchair and then a Again, having the cabinets or having the uh, dishwasher and the stove open uh, like a cabinet is a lot nicer because then you can get around. But if you only have a galley style kitchen and it's only like 14 inches between cabinets, you're not going to get in there with a wheelchair. Right. Okay. Well, and, and one thing people have to realize, you may not be in a wheelchair now, but as we get older, we're only one injury or one disability or one illness from being in a wheelchair. May not be long term, but if you're in it for two weeks or a month, yeah, that, that could be an eternity if you can't get into anything. Well, I, I, I preach all the time. An ounce of preparation is is so important, but most people are reactionary. They don't they don't listen. That, but they're going to listen to you. Um, well, anything else you want to throw in there? Well, just the, just the fact that you know some things are required by law. If they're Title II or Title III and, and, and uh, things like that, private home ownership, they're only required if you're doing a rental, if you have a rental and you're advocating a rental for people with disabilities, that may become a thing. But if it's your own private home, it's called aging in place. And you have to look at that. And, and you know, you talk to a contract and he says, you know, you really ought to think about blah, 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 or putting this light switch in here. And you think, well, yeah, I don't need it right now. But I always tell people you're one, illness or one injury away from having to really need that. And you think, boy, I wish I'd done that when I could have done That's it. Right. That's right. Uh, and, yeah. and yeah, you're going to spend a little bit more money, but your house is more functional for you to be able to use. And, and when it comes time to sell it, uh, it's, it's a lot better. And as we've discussed in prior things, coming into your house without steps, doorways being at least a minimum of 32 inch clear opening, uh, light switches, all those things are, are, 
thing. So you want to really work with your contractor and, and uh, you know, see what you can do and what you need to do. I like it. All right. So Kevin just brought a whole bunch of stuff to us, all his expertise. And I, I want, for those of you who thought that this was a great value, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell uh, to receive our new videos as they get posted. Kev, as always, thanks for your insights, man. And we'll be chatting on the other side. Not a problem. Always available to you, Mike. Thanks, Kevin.